Greetings, friends! We're pleased to present Update 1.51 Cold Steel, in which we present our first winter map, new ground vehicles and aircraft, and a serious number of high-quality changes which we're sure you'll be pleased with. Let's start with the interface. The damage indicator has become more informative. It is now simpler than ever to see which of your modules is damaged or who among your crew has been injured. This is very helpful for assessing your situation on the battlefield. New combat items have also been introduced – orders. With their help, you can give tasks to other players. Each order is active for a certain amount of time. Complete the order within the given time and receive Silver Lions as a reward. This means you can earn extra by completing the tasks that other players set. Orders are currently available for arcade and realistic battles. Good news for those who've been waiting for extended missions. The developers have created a new confrontation mode with infinite respawns and the ability to join a battle that is already in progress. The first players who will be able to experience confrontation mode will be pilots and realistic and simulator battles. The teams fight for points. The more a team shoots down aircraft, destroys ground targets, captures points and completes additional tasks, the more points and the closer to victory that team will get. So, what about new vehicles? I hear our pilots and tankers ask. Let's start with the vanguard of the key conflicting sides on the ground. In the US line, the M60 medium tank has taken up the torch of the M48 Patton. With better armor and a far more powerful weapon, this is an excellently balanced representative of the top-line US medium tanks. As for Germany, the renowned Leopard 1 is entering the stage. By sacrificing armor thickness, it became possible to create a fast, maneuverable and compact tank sporting an excellent cannon with stunning ballistics. The perfect competitor to the T-54. New tanks mean new shells. Specifically for the cannons of the L7 Leopard and the M60, the game has received a new type of ammo – high-explosive squash head shells. Until composite armor appeared, these shells were highly effective. They possessed the advantages of both an armor-piercing and a high-explosive round. The USSR, on the other hand, is focusing on heavy vehicles this time with the T-10M. With its so-called pike nose much loved by Soviet tankers, in combination with the excellent armor on all its projections and a maximum speed of 50 km per hour, this tank will cause more than a few problems even for fast enemy medium tanks. Is that enough top tanks for you? Let's continue. Premium vehicles aren't just there for faster research, they also represent feats of engineering that can amaze even veteran tankers. For example, take the Soviet Su-100Y. It's enough to state the caliber of 130 mm, as after that, everything becomes clear. This is a true battleship in the SPG world. It has an 890 horsepower engine, which was used on torpedo and riverboats, and a naval cannon, which was used on cruisers and shoreline batteries. This weapon's power should be enough not only for armored targets, but also for reinforced concrete shelters and pillboxes. Another representative of premium armor is the advanced version of the T-34, the T-34-100. The modernization of this tank was so deep that anyone who sees its outline and expects an easy victory will be sorry they didn't think again. The 100mm LB-1 cannon with its ballistic properties identical to those of the D-10 is capable of a great deal of carnage. But German tankers too will be able to brag about their wonders of engineering with the first and so far only multi-turreted German tank in the game. The name is quite hard to pronounce, so we'll just spell it out on screen. Neubaufahrzeug, translated as the new construction vehicle, and this tank really does differ from other German armored vehicles. The vehicle will take place of the first rank among premium vehicles and will be a dangerous weapon in the right hands. Its main turret houses 75 and 37 mm twin guns. It also has two high-caliber machine guns that are also capable of causing plenty of trouble at its rank. The US have received the new SPG, the Super Hellcat. The idea of combining the excellent mobility of the M18 with the powerful armament of the M36 led to the creation of this tank destroyer. The result was the usual fast-moving Hellcat, but with a more powerful 90 mm weapon. Fans of American armor are sure to love this vehicle. And now, it's time to go up a couple of miles. The Japanese side has presented our pilots with a new fighter, the J2M5, in two models at once. One of them will be placed in the main research tree and will be available for leveling up. The other model, with the 30mm cannons, will be available as a premium aircraft. The J2M5 is the fastest plane in the J2M Raiden series. Another new Japanese aircraft can also boast impressive speeds, the Ki-44, an army fighter interceptor. The USSR premium aircraft line has received a field modification of the Hurricane with Soviet armament, a pair of Berezin machine guns and two Schwab cannons. Another Hurricane Mark IV has appeared in the British research tree. 
This model has Trankford armor and two suspended 40mm Vickers ass cannons. And here's the Full Metal Yak 3. This model has a VK 107A engine, a Duralement skin, new weaponry, and excellent flight characteristics. This update brings a number of new bombers and assault planes, which will satisfy fans of these types of aircraft. Germany has received a Trophy Il 2 Model 9042 attack aircraft and the twin engine Dornier 17E bomber. The US line is bolstering its ranks with the sprightly 836 Apache Invader and the SB2C Helldiver carrier borne dive bomber. Britain is receiving the Firebrand Mark IV carrier borne strike fighter. The developers have also been working on updating aircraft already available to players. The models of IL-2M, BF-109E, F-2A and Hurricane Mark IIb have been upgraded. Winter has reached War Thunder along with its very first winter location. Now, not just pilots, but tankers too can try out their winter camouflage. Welcome to Finland! But don't count on a cold reception, the battles promise to be heated, and the winners will be those who find a way to use the capabilities of their vehicles and team to the max among forests, icy ridges, cliffs and frozen waters. There are many more new additions which we're excited to show you. Try out the new update and see it all for yourself. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube, visit the War Thunder site, the forum and War Thunder Live and of course our social network pages and Facebook. Good hunting!